Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about magnetic field. And specifically we're actually going to be talking about a relatively recent discovery, or I guess more of an analysis, of earth magnetic field that is created by water. Anyway, let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. <laughs> Now you may have been already aware that Earth has a relatively strong magnetic field that protects us from a lot of dangerous stuff that comes from our Sun and also from uh, space in general. Um, and this magnetic field is basically one of the main reasons why life can actually strive on this planet relatively easy. But what you may have not known is that, well, first of all, we're still not entirely certain about what is it that's uh, creating the magnetic field inside our planet. We think it's the molten um, iron that circulates around, but it's still not entirely 100% certain. But what we are certain is that there's something else that creates magnetic field on the planet, and we've recently been able to actually uh, measure it relatively accurately. That something is the ocean. The salty water here that circulates around our planet generates a magnetic field and it's maybe not super strong, but it's strong enough to measure uh, using satellites that orbit around the planet. So the scientists that studied this particular phenomenon discovered that, um, okay, well, first of all, it's actually relatively weak compared to the actual magnetic field. Uh, but it is definitely something that you can detect. Well, not you and I, but scientists can detect. Uh, so the, uh, in terms of units. The measurements here are in uh, micro Tesla, at least for the actual magnetic field of Earth. And it's usually between 0.25 to about 0.65 micro Tesla. And uh, the scientists then discovered that um, if you basically just measure the magnetic field of water, it's about 20,000 times less strong. So it's only about two or three nano Tesla. So if I were to actually decrease all of this magnetic field and just leave the water based magnetic field, it would actually look like this. So yeah, there you go. It's practically invisible. So it's actually not really that strong at all, but it is definitely there. And it's important because this actually lets us realize or helps us understand that the uh, magnetic field can actually be formed by things other than uh, molten metal. And specifically, let's actually get our Earth back to its previous glory here by increasing its magnetic field. And specifically, um, we can actually have magnetic field that's formed by water, um, maybe on the outside or inside the planet. And the more salty it is, the more salinity it has, the more ions it has, the more magnetic field it will actually produce. So here's the thing. There's another object in our solar system that is actually um, unusual in a way that it seems to have magnetic field where it really kind of shouldn't. So back in, I think it was 1996, uh, the Galileo probe orbiting Jupiter discovered that um, one of the Galilean moons, Ganymede, was actually quite uh, interesting in terms of magnetosphere. It actually has relatively strong magnetosphere, at least when it comes to um, other objects in our solar system. Now, it's not as strong as Earth, but it is actually detectable and uh, does, to some extent, protect the Moon from various uh, dangerous radiation coming from Jupiter and coming from the Sun. The magnetic field here is about 40 to 50 times less strong, or weaker, I guess, um, than the one on Earth, but this is where it gets interesting. We don't really know what makes it, what creates it. Uh, we don't really know where it's coming from. For um, all we know, uh, this moon actually mostly contains ice and basically water and uh, silicates. We don't really think that there's a lot of metal on the inside or possibly no metal at all. So where is this coming from? And so this is actually where this study might actually help us explain how Ganymede gets all of this water. It might have a really, really active circulating ocean on the inside that spins fast enough that it actually generates a relatively large magnet magnetosphere. Basically, it's kind of similar to what Earth has, but inside the, uh, the moon. And interestingly, um, 
because Ganymede actually most likely has a lot more water on the inside than uh, our planet Earth does, and because the salinity here might actually be much higher, this would actually, or could potentially explain where Ganymede gets its magnetosphere. Now, this is obviously still a speculation, and until we actually land here, and until we explore this uh, beautiful moon, or until we actually drill inside and try to see what's inside, uh, this is still kind of a guess. But it's probably one of the better explanations we have so far, unless we find some kind of unusual metal that it might have that creates this. Now, don't forget, this is actually the only moon we have that has such a strong magnetosphere. Even Io doesn't have anything. Uh, not to mention uh, Saturn's moon Titan. So, in terms of magnetosphere, it's really uh, the gas giants that have the highest, uh, then you have the ice giants, Neptune and Uranus, then there's Earth, and then there's Ganymede. So Ganymede actually has stronger magnetosphere than even Mercury, and Mercury is a planet that actually has quite a lot of metal in it. So, for all uh, we know, at least as a guess right now, um, the Ganymede's magnetosphere might actually be formed in a similar way that the Earth, and specifically the water on the surface of Earth, creates a little bit of an additional field as well. So, in the future uh, exploration of Jupiter and possibly in future studies, we might be able to definitely put uh, at the end to this sort of a debate and discussion and find out what's actually creating all of this. And it's actually important to understand how magnetosphere works because in the past few years, scientists have started to speculate that our magnetosphere might actually be flipped soon. And if it does flip, it will actually, at least for the time being, while it's flipping, leave our planet kind of unprotected to the uh, solar radiation. So we need to figure out what's happening and when it's going to happen. Well, anyway, so that's all I wanted to say in this video, and hopefully now you know a little bit more about the magnetosphere, and you now know that water can also create a magnetosphere as well. I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn through video games. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.